Welcome back to Rudy's One Sixth World for another First Thoughts video. This time we'll be taking a look at the latest pre-order drop from Infamous Toys, which is actually rumored to be another Toys Era branch, and their One Sixth Scale Dark Servant. So let's start with the obvious. This is an unlicensed figure based on Steppenwolf from the DCEU's theatrical cut of Justice League. What's really interesting here is that Infamous chose to work on a figure based on the theatrical version of the movie as opposed to the Snyder Cut, which features a strikingly different version of Steppenwolf. Uh, oh boy, where to begin with DC, with DC film slates? Um, I could get really sidetracked if I let myself, so I'm going to try not to. Uh, suffice to say that the theatrical cut of Justice League is one of the main reasons why I stopped picking up figures from the DCEU. Um, and honestly, I thought the Snyder Cut, once it was released, was a far superior film. Uh, if DC had stuck with that, I'd be much more excited for these characters. Like I said, I could go off on a big tangent, so instead let's just focus on the figure. And let's start with the accessories. The figure comes with swappable hands and his axe, so not much more to be honest. I don't know what else they could have provided, to be, though, uh, maybe the mother boxes? Uh, Toys Era isn't really known for diorama bases, so uh, I think accessory-wise we're getting fairly reasonable elements here. Um, the axe does seem uh, screen accurate and has some nice detailing on the on the blade side, almost like a molten look. Uh, the handle itself has some nice texturing and the paint apps look decent enough. Um, now focusing on the the, the uniform or the, the armor. Uh, he's an armored figure and comes with a helmeted sculpt and silver armor plating over a, a dark bodysuit. My initial thought is, uh, unfortunately looks a little plasticky. I, I get that it's an armored figure, but, but the paint application in some of the pictures just, I, I don't know that it's achieving the desired effect. Some pictures look good, some pictures, the helmet looks a little too plasticky and others, it might just be the lighting, but the first impressions are it's not the best. Uh, there is some nice texturing on the armor plates and some interesting color choices with some red hues in the helmet and, and on some of the armor, the shoulder armor in particular. Um, and the interface between the armor plates and the sculpted under armor, uh, almost chain mail by his neck, um, looks nice as far as the detailing, but the interface, there's something that just doesn't look quite right. Uh, maybe once the figure's in hand, it'll look better, but um, I'm not crazy about the look. Uh, boots do appear to be split cut, so that should help with the articulation, but not really detailed. Um, one thing that I've noticed with Infamous Toys uh, and Toys Era figures is that the, they don't really focus too much on the, the shoes or the feet themselves, so uh, just something to keep in mind. Articulation wise, the promo pics show the figure holding some different poses with the arms held straight out and the legs have some posability, but I wouldn't hold my breath on, on being able to do extremely dynamic uh, poses. Uh, the arms look like they're restricted by the bodysuit and all the pictures show like a max 90 degree bend. Um, and there doesn't seem to be any torso articulation either, so I think this is gonna be pretty much a, a stand either museum pose figure or you're gonna get some poses with the ax held out and, and, and just ready to strike. Um, so not much there. Uh, now let's go to the head sculpt. As far as it's the head sculpt, it's okay. I think there's, it's pretty clear who this figure is supposed to be. And there's definitely some nice pan, pain application on the sculpt along with uh, the details like the bones protruding from his chin. And you've got a lot of wrinkle effects in it, and good skin effects uh, around his eyes, his mouth. You know, he's got almost looks like scarring. Um, and, and I do like the fact that we are getting an expression with the, the more angry look. So from a face sculpt perspective, it, it gives the figure a little personality as opposed to your more stoic, uh, flat looks. But the likeness isn't quite there. Uh, maybe it's the expression on the face. Uh, if they'd gone with an expressionless face, maybe it would have been there. Um, it, it's not not there. I, I don't think it's it's even that close to, to the actor or the, the CGI version of the face. Um, so overall thoughts though, figure's okay. I'm trying to not let my bias for this version of the character cloud my judgment. Um, having said that, I think the figure looks a little plasticky as I mentioned. 
it is a bigger uh, piece too at about 19 inches so it'll it'll have a presence in the collection but I'm just worried that with the paint apps uh, if they're not that good it's gonna stick out in a negative way and maybe look a little cheap I do have the infamous toys Dark Star uh, on order so that one's an even bigger figure and, and I do have a similar concern there so I guess we'll see once uh, once I have that one in hand and I do a showcase for that. Uh, this figure isn't cheap either. It's coming in, I've seen it, about $310. So I, I think for me, it just doesn't seem like it's worth that, especially, you know, with me bypassing some other DC figures that have much better detail and are much more central to, uh, to the DC lore. Um, also, there's another company that's issuing a dark side figure that doesn't seem to have much posability, but it does look like overall texture-wise and, and paint application-wise, it is a better quality uh, one than this. So I, if I had to pick one from the movie, I'd probably pick that one over over this version of Steppenwolf. Um, or at least this version. I don't know why, to why uh, I almost said Toys Era, but why Infamous went with this version of the figure. Um, and and they sh I personally think they should have gone with the Snyder Cut version. I feel like the char character in the uh, theatrical version of Justice League was almost universally panned. Uh, they, people, the comments were that it didn't look that great, and I, I think that's one of the things that the Snyder Cut did better in, in making uh, Steppenwolf much more ominous and, and just stand out and, and have a visual appeal to it. Um, I feel like, I, I don't know why Infamous didn't do that. Maybe. It was just that it's a much more complicated sculpt, and obviously the the characters you know achieved through CGI, and, and maybe a lot of the detailing was was much more difficult to do in one sixth form by Toys R Us. So they went with the theatrical cut of the version. Um, so that that alone makes me pretty much think about passing on this one. Um, so those are my thoughts. I, I think for me, like I said, it's a big pass. I just can't justify the cost for for this particular character and, and specifically this version of it um what do you all think a am i being too harsh uh am i wrong about the theatrical cut version of steppenwolf versus the snyder cut version let me know in the comments and if you're enjoying the content please like subscribe and comment i'm looking to do some more retrospective showcases on older figures i own as well as some showcases on new figures i'm getting and hopefully the channel will continue to grow from there uh, let me know and we'll touch base on the next video